John Bush here with the Sovereign BTC podcast with my lovely wife, Catherine Bleich, a.k.a. the Bitmom. Howdy. We are cruising through Alabama. Just uh, went through Mississippi and Louisiana before that. We are on the second day of our Unconventional Living Tour 2014. Cruising all the way up to Lancaster, New Hampshire for Porcupine Freedom Festival number 11. And on the way, we're going to be stopping at Bitcoin in the Beltway in Washington, D.C. We're going to be screening Sovereign Living Episode 4 at both of those events. We're also going to be stopping by in Asheville, North Carolina tomorrow evening to do a screening of Episodes 3 and 4 of Sovereign Living, the reality show. You can check that out at SovereignLiving.tv. We want to invite you to follow us along. We're doing a live blog. Kat's doing a live blog with like six updates a day. I don't know how she does it. And we're taking care of our two kiddos on the on the road as well. We've got our hands full. And we got our wallets full of Bitcoin. Check out... Un- uh, uncoinventional.com. I didn't know if he was going to mention it for the live blog. Uncoinventional.com. It redirects you to the Bitcoin Magazine live blog. Uncoinventional.com. Also on uncoinventional.com, you'll be able to see how to donate to us if you want to support us with Litecoin or Bitcoin or PayPal donation. Yes, we'll take it far ends. It's listed as, it's within the live blog itself, so you have to scroll down. I'll try and post it every couple days just to make sure it's on the, you know, easy to find. Better post it every couple days. (laughs) So, uh, we're cruising around the country and we're doing the No FRN Challenge. It's our goal. We're committed to not using Federal Reserve notes the entire trip. We're going to be on the road for about a month, uh, coming back down, spending some time in Kansas City on the way back home. And so far, we're doing pretty well. We started the day off with a purchase from a Target in San Marcos, Texas. Before we left, we bought a charger, and we used gift.com, gyft.com to do that. We got some gas cards from coinfuel.com. It's one of the one of the areas I was a little bit concerned about, but thankfully there's this service, coinfuel.com. You, you get in contact with them, you purchase the gift cards, the gas cards, and they send them to you. It takes about two weeks right now. But we have some uh, BP cards and some Exxon Mobil cards. And then we used a service by Orbitz called uh, Global Hotel Card, globalhotelcard.com. And that's what allowed us to book our hotel. We stayed at a uh, Comfort Suites. It was okay. They were renovating. It was a little bit cheaper. Nice hot continental breakfast. And uh, also last night we stopped at Logan. So Gift.com has a lot of good. Actually, they're not the greatest restaurants, but there's some decent ones. We had a dinner at Logan's. Had a little sirloin steak. That was pretty good. And again, we're blogging about all this at uncoinventional.com. So follow along with us. It's pretty exciting. We're we're on the road. We've got an eight-hour trek today. A seven-hour trek yesterday. We're going to be in Atlanta, Georgia tonight, and we're trying to link up with the guys at BitPay to come by there and do an interview with some of their staff to chat about BitPay and what they have going on. BitPay, of course, is the merchant services provider that allows businesses to receive Bitcoin and immediately convert it over to cash. So not only do my wife and I do... Oh, here's some furniture that's thrown on the side of the road. That's not very safe. Nice leather couch. Maybe we should pick it up. Not only uh, do my wife and I do uh, media in the Bitcoin space, but we're also really uh, into encouraging local businesses to accept Bitcoin. And we talk to just about every business that we can. And one of the things that we found, of course, the biggest objection is if they've actually heard of Bitcoin, they think that it's volatile or they've heard some crazy stuff about it failing, the price jumping all over the place. So BitPay has a wonderful opportunity to uh, overcome those objections. Uh, when you can tell people that, well, you have the opportunity to immediately convert the Bitcoin, I'm sorry, the Bitcoin to Federal Reserve notes. I don't know why you would want to do that. Maybe if you have overhead, but uh, it, it definitely helps to alleviate the concerns about the volatility. People don't even have to receive the Bitcoin at all. Also, it can help people's concerns about any type of uh, regulatory compliance or what they're going to do about taxes or their accounting. It's essentially the same as receiving a credit card payment. Eventually, it makes its way to your checking account or whatever account they're using associated with the business. So we're really excited. Hopefully, we'll be able to stop by and interview them and and provide that to you here on the podcast. I wanted to take a moment before we let you go to talk about the Free Ross campaign. Many people in the Bitcoin world are familiar with Ross Ulbricht, the alleged mastermind behind the Silk Road. Uh, Of course, I say alleged because it hasn't been proven that he is or is not 
uh, Dread Pri Pirate Roberts, uh, the webmaster, I guess, behind Silk Road. But what it all boils down to, Silk Road, of course, is the online black and gray market where people use Bitcoin anonymously to uh, conduct business. And, and I mean, it wasn't just drugs and shady things, not that drugs are shady per se, but it, it was all sorts of goods and services that you could purchase on there, among them illicit drugs. I don't even know what that word illicit means. But uh, even if he was the mastermind, in my opinion, no victim, no crime. There's nothing wrong with creating an environment where individuals can engage in voluntary exchange with one another. And in fact, there's been studies that demonstrated that Silk Road, buying drugs and selling drugs on Silk Road is far more safe and actually reduced the, uh, the occurrence of violence that takes place surrounding the, the normal drug trade. You know, maybe the drug cartels even thought it was some, some stiff competition. So I just wanted to throw that out there, regardless of Ross Ulbricht's, uh, you know, his involvement with the, with the Silk Road. I, I think there shouldn't be, he shouldn't be locked in a cage either way. So there's a lot of people that are coming to his aid, namely his mother, Lynn Ulbricht, who we interviewed on the Sovereign BTC podcast several shows ago, who's a wonderful, darling woman really strong, compassionate, and she's his strongest advocate. She's out there fighting tooth and nail to support Ross. She'll be at the Porcupine Freedom Festival. She's giving a speech of her own on Saturday and Tuesday of the event, a week from today, she will be sitting on the BitMoms Women in Bitcoin panel, and she'll be talking about the things that she's doing to help her son. Yeah, her quest to find justice and free Ross has really resonated with Catherine and I, because we have children. And I can't imagine what it would be like to have your child locked in a cage, taken away from you in the world. She seems like she's in really good spirits, and she says Ross is in good spirits too. But I wanted to uh, tell the listeners of this podcast about an Indiegogo campaign that's currently underway. Catherine and I are helping to promote it. Our good friend Harlan Dietrich of Brave New Bookstore, the first brick and mortar in the state of Texas to accept Bitcoin, and apparently the first brick and mortar bookstore in the world to accept Bitcoin, so they say, I know, the mainstream media reported it, so it must be must be legit. Uh, he's really spearheading this Indiegogo campaign. You can find it at freeross.org. You click on the donate tab and you'll see a little button there over to the right for it. There's all sorts of great opportunities to donate and get some perks in return for your donation, like a free Ross shirt. They're also doing a, uh, what's it called? I forget what it's called, but it's a basically a Raspberry Pi that comes preloaded with a Tor browser. So it allows you to completely anonymously surf the internet with the Raspberry Pi, never once allowing it, uh, having a piece of hardware that's tracked back to your name, your IP address, or anything like that. So check out the campaign. It's at freeross.org. That's it's, our daughter. We're in the car. Nancy. We're all getting antsy. Sometimes she blasts us when we're talking to each other. Ollie, do you have something to say on the podcast? Nothing? Nothing about Bitcoin? Nothing about Porkfest or Bitcoin in the Beltway? She's shaking her head. Are you excited about Porkfest, Ollie? She's blaring. <laughs> She's watching <laughs> Curious George on the DVD player. Uh, was that bought with Bitcoin? At Target? Yes. All Curious right. George bought with Bitcoin with a gift GYFT.com. GYFT.com. <laughs> <laughs> so go to freeross.org, learn about what's going on there. We're strong supporters of Ross Ulbricht. We do not believe he ought to be behind bars. And in fact, we support the prison abolition movement. I think caging human beings or caging any animal for that matter is, is morally wrong. It doesn't help to solve any problems. It doesn't help to make victims of aggressors whole. It's a flawed thing, and it sucks that that's the norm, and nobody really seems to care about it. Well, and right now, it's really tearing apart families, and it's it's really destroying human beings on a fundamental level. People get caged for things that are not violent, that don't involve hurting other people or aggressing upon other people, and they're taken away from their family. Their families lose uh, often the father, the provider, the financial caregiver, they lose their partner, the person that they need to help raise their children. And it's really screwed up and it's really wrong and it's cruel. And John and I know a lot of activists who have put, been put behind bars for 
really doing nothing, literally. Oftentimes it is for nothing, and sometimes they are told, oh yeah, oops, maybe we shouldn't have arrested you, here's $10,000, here's $50,000, I hope that makes you whole, but in the end, it doesn't make anybody whole, and it doesn't make society any better, it only makes it worse, because then entire families are struggling, entire families are suffering, and entire families are emotionally scarred for life. And to bring this concept back to Bitcoin, one of the great hopes that Bitcoin has to offer is that it allows people to engage in voluntary exchange without supporting this big state coercive institution. So you got to remember, every time you use a Federal Reserve note, people say the Federal Reserve notes have no value. They actually do have value, in large part because of legal tender laws. But every time you use one of those evil Federal Reserve notes, you're actually contributing value to the monetary system that's utilized to lock people up, put them in cages, not to mention to fund foreign wars of aggression. And we see all that being thrown back in our face now with the, what's happened in Iraq and Baghdad, if you've been keeping up with that. So we're so excited of the, the hope that Bitcoin offers to really change the game, to show people that we can organize transactions and economies without relying on a central authority. And I really am really excited that Bitcoin undermines the very central authority that's locking people up and tossing them on cages for simply creating an environment, a marketplace for people to engage in voluntary exchange and to consume things in their body that obviously it's totally their choice. We're pro-choice when it comes to drugs. People should be able to choose what they do as long as they don't harm other people. So bring it back to freeross.org. Check out the donate tab and you can find the Indiegogo campaign. There's all sorts of cool things. You can donate. I think it's a $4,000 level and you'll actually get a 3D printer signed by Cody Wilson. He's also a big supporter of Ross Ulbrich. And he is a good segue. He'll be speaking. He's the keynote speaker of the Bitcoin in the Beltway event in Washington, D.C. starting this uh, Friday, I believe the 18th or 19th of June. It starts Thursday or Friday. You can check out BitcoinBeltway.com. It's being organized by Jason King of Sean's Outpost. So try to make it out to that if you're in the Northeast, if you want to fly up there. It's going to be a great event. A lot of awesome speakers. Jeffrey Tucker, Cody Wilson, MK Lords, Davi Barker, Captain and myself again will be uh, screening episode four of Sovereign Living the Reality Show, which is all about Bitcoin and alternative currency. So check that out, BitcoinBeltway.com. And the following week, all week, Porcupine Freedom Festival. It's a gathering of 1,500 liberty-minded individuals and families all coming together in peaceful, voluntary community to engage in exchange, learning, fun, dancing, parties. It's going to be a good time. Eric Voorhees of uh, Coinapult puts on an UNSA dance party every Sunday. It's basically a rave party that goes on to the wee hours of the morning, so it's always a good time. So check that out at porkfest.com. Kat, you got any closing thoughts? Free Ross. Free Ross .org. Uncon uncoinventional.com sovereignbtc.com thebitmom.com follow us on twitter at twitter.com slash softbtc or twitter.com slash thebitmom and as I like to say use bitcoin live free and prosper peace we're out free Ross